I'm Robin De Jesus. I was born and raised in Norwalk, Connecticut, like an hour out of New York. Um, my parents are Puerto Rican, both of them from San Lorenzo, mm -hmm. El Pueblo de Chayang. Mm -hmm. I got involved with theater. Well, I always, I always wanted to sing. Um, and I started singing when I was in middle school. Mm -hmm. And then someone came up to me and said, you know, they're doing a musical, a musical, the musical Grease. And we had just done like a bunch of the songs from Grease for choir. So he asked me if I wanted to audition. And I said, yeah. And then I just randomly went in, like not expecting anything, was like casting the ensemble and went to the high school and just kept doing theater from there. I mean, I was always told that I wouldn't make it in this field because I was short and I was Hispanic. And that was by my teachers that wanted me to study voice. Um, or not all my teachers, but some, you know, want, thought that I was more suited for an operatic career. And I didn't want to, but I was doing it because I thought it's the closest thing to what I love. And when I um, graduated from high school, I was getting ready to go study classical music. And I randomly was told to go audition for something. Like, it was just an open call. And I booked it. And it was just sheer luck. And, and, and ever since then, that one blessing that, like, a blessing from God that was like, you need to go this other path, was just thrown at my feet. And so, thankfully to that, everything's going pretty well since then. Oh, wow. It was, I was, I was very green. And, and, and you know, I still am to an extent. Um, but I, I was very green then because I didn't really know what I was doing. It was, it was, a, it was, it was sort of... It was my learning experience. It was my version of college. I didn't, I, I was always told, you know, I was a theater actor, so I was always being big and broad and whatnot. And, and then to do that and to be much more subtle and, and learn that craft, um, there, naturally there were a lot of not so great moments caught on, but you know, it happens. So you learn in the run. Oh, big time. Yeah. I mean, like, especially for me, so many other blessings have come from that. And I've done much more work since then, much broader work. And I've gone out, I spread on, much more directions than, than that. So it, I, I have been blessed in that sense. There are times that I, I, I would like to know what it would feel like to go back and tackle that all over again, how I would handle it now. And it was rough. There was like a year and a half where I didn't get any work. I was waiting tables. Um, and, I, and I wasn't waiting tables in the most glamorous places in the world. But, but it was humbling. And it was good for me in that sense of like, it really tamed me down. It, I, I, I think it really was for the better for me to be able to feel like I was, you know, heading, heading up and then have this moment of like a crash. Then like a year and a half later, things kind of started rolling again, mostly readings and whatnot. And I, and I switched agencies and that's, that's really kind of where, where things kind of flipped for the better. And I, I remember my agent telling me, you know, you can't always just take work that's there for money. She's like, you, sh you, you shouldn't be afraid to turn down work. And you also, should not be afraid to do it didn't pay much. And I remember at that moment, I started doing all these like little itty bitty like readings and sort of like just little like 10 minute scenes for writers and stuff. And then like a few months after that, I started just getting offers without auditioning. Or I'd get people that would come up to me and be like, hey, I, I saw you in that 10 minute scene, I wrote this for you. Like they would write out a foot out play for me. And I was, and I remember being like, oh, oh wow, this, this is not paying the bills, but it's so much more gratifying. And, um, and you know, I, I did get to a point, not to say that, you know, I always do that. I did get to a point eventually where I was like, okay, now I need to like sort of settle for something that might not be as great, but it'll pay the bills, you know? So now it's sort of been finding that balance of both worlds. Life is about balance. balance isn't yes, it? life is completely about balance. So was that what what helped change my life a lot too was I, I saw the musical Carolina change. Uh huh. And I saw it like five times. I had never done that with any show, and I was so passionate about it, and I and I could feel everyone else's passion on stage with it, you know. And I remember I said to myself sitting there, I was like, I want to do stuff like this. Um, who? My, yeah, my, 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 my parents did. They were really great. The only thing that was rough for my mother was when I got camp was the fact that it was a drag queen. Oh. My family's been incredibly supportive. There was, there was one point where I was ready to go back to college, where to go to college, I never started it because I couldn't afford it. Um, I, I remember it, I was, it was like a month before I was supposed to go or two months, and I was trying to figure out the loan situation because I needed like another like 20 grand more. And she said to me, she goes, Robin, I, I, I kind of have a weird feeling. 
She's like, I don't think you should go. And, you know, that sounds crazy, your mother, to tell you, you know, you shouldn't go to college. But she was like, no, I, I feel like something's coming and you're struggling so much for this money. And I don't want you to feel like you're not, you're going to waste it when you're already in a career that's already working out and you're already working. And so she said, I think you should just take a second and let things be. And so I, I didn't go to school. And three months later, I booked my first Broadway show. And since then, it's been like a, it's it, it's been this great ripple effect for me. It's like just everything in life in general. I suppose that one of the hardest things in business is to not get frustrated. Is to always know that and have faith that it's going to work out and be okay with the way things currently are, and the things that you're not okay with to do what it is that you can to to get through that. You know, it is really difficult sometimes because. Um, you only get seen as one thing in this business sometimes if, 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 if that's what you know is one of the first things you've done or whatever. And so it is very difficult to try to break that mold. I, I think for me, what helps the most is having an agent who's willing to fight for you. One who, one who says to the agencies, you know, this person can do more. Because if that's the person that's speaking on behalf of you and they can't push those buttons and, and they can't talk you up, then you know who who really can because they're the ones trying to get you in the door. It's also difficult, you know, as as a Hispanic, because you also want to know that when you walk in the door for those roles that are not the specific things that you would expect to go in for. You know, when the door is open for you to do something else, sometimes you feel like as a Hispanic, you know, you have to prove to yourself that you can do this for other Hispanics, so that we all can be seen in a, in a much bigger light, you know what I mean? So do you feel like you have a mission within your arts? <laughs> you do sometimes. There, there are some times where you feel like things are bigger than you. Like you're not just, just doing them for yourself. That's really, really difficult for me. I don't know what to say. You put me on the spot. Oh my, I, I do love Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, I think his work is really great. And I love the fact that he's able to balance both worlds of theater and and film and you know there's another young actor that I that I really love um, Anthony Mackie I his career is actually the one that I would love to emulate the most in the sense of um, he's a young um, black actor and you know he does his share of like films that do things for for you know for black actors and he does his share of of things that you know you wouldn't expect other black actors to do or you wouldn't expect the door to be open to them because of the stereotypes and whatnot art should provoke art isn't just to be enjoyed are you a dreamer? I am a dreamer. I am I am a massive dreamer. And I and I didn't I didn't realize that until through a discussion I had with my mom about a year ago, she happened to mention my dreaming and the fact that I was always a dreamer and, and so it's funny you should mention that because it is something that I never really realized that I was, but I am, yes. Do you I guess I guess the, the big thing for young artists is to keep working at it. And, you know, it, 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 there are so many times where you give up or you feel like you want to give up and, 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 and you don't want to live your life feeling like you could have been something. You want to know that you at least tried and if you have to go where it is that you feel passionate about and know that it will eventually come. It will eventually come. Mm -hmm. I think it's brilliant, you know? I, I, I feel like we are a minority in this business and and there and, and and unless we as you know as a group sort of come to this general consensus of you know we affect each other and any and on how we are all viewed as a group unfortunately when you're in a minority you're not just your own entity sometimes sometimes you're considered more than one and so i i think the beauty of revolution latina is the idea of us coming together and making a movement together and having this effect and 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 just as a group creating a ripple um that will affect others beyond us you know what i mean and and, and you know what and, and it's called revolution latina but it affects others as well it's not just about art culture it's about other subsequent cultures as well thank you so much for your time papa thank you